Hello and welcome to another tutorial. Today we'll be making the chromatic sphere part of this shield bubble. So without any further delay, let's start in a fresh project. Uh, let's create a new shader then, Amplify Shader Editor, Universal. Hello? Oh, okay, got disconnected there. Um, yep, so we'll need it to be a transparent shader. So just change that there. And this isn't going to be very difficult. Really all we're going to do is sample the camera opaque texture. That's like the grab pass in the built-in render pipeline. And uh, that's it. We're just going to sample it with offsets for the R, G, and B channels. That's going to give us a chromatic, chromatic aberration effect. Um, but it's just an RGB split across the entire mapping. So, yeah, so let's get a texture object in here. Make it global because we're going to be sampling a name asset. Um, that's the right word to call it, but anyways. Register, we'll call this. Camera big texture. Okay, so let's get the big texture and sample it with some UVs, right? And pass that through to color, the RGB, because color is an RGB here. And let's see. These are not the correct coordinates. So these are the surface coordinates for the sphere. What I need are the screen coordinates. So that's going to get truncated. Ah. <laughs> it's not even named correctly. Oh, and it's still not right. I need to pay attention. Okay. We don't need it casting a shadow because, you know, why would it be? It's completely transparent and it's going to distort what's behind it. It's so just to make sure this is working. It's a little sanity check. Let's multiply this by like, you know, like two on the green channel for something, or three on the blue. Um, I just want to make sure it's, yeah. So it is modifying what's behind it, or it is rendering what's behind it. Not, it's not just not there, fully transparent. So this is right now fully opaque, but it's a transparent shader. And to get it to appear like it's fully transparent, we're just rendering uh, what's behind it using screen coordinates. So now. If we were to offset the screen coordinates just a little bit, so let's try this. Uh, how much offset do we want? Well, that's going to be some scale. So let's create a float. We call this RGB split. Right, it's a scalar value. Uh, how much? Uh, put it like 0.1 because it's going to be a very small amount that we want to move between 0 and point, uh, 0.1. So we'll default at 0 0.0. Okay. Just just for starters, let's see where it goes. Next, we want some sort of offsets separately for R, G, and B. So we're going to have to sample this texture not just once, but three times. And with one, two, three different offsets. So let's just move this back here. For the first offset, I'd want perhaps... Okay, so we have R, G, and B that we want to offset. Negative one. Oops, it's not negative one. Negative one and negative one will give us an offset that's bottom left, right? So, as this is scaled by RGB split, literally just a multiplication, um, what's going to be happening is that it's going to be going from the center zero zero zero, which is no offset, and then bottom left. So let's go ahead and add that offset or apply that offset to uh, the screen position. So this is multiplied. There you go, and that's really it there. OK, 
Okay. This can be done three times. So two, three. So this is for the R. For the G, we want an offset. We don't really need to name this because these are constants. But, and they're just defining the direction of offset. Right, and we'll also have a blue offset. B offset. So RGB, red being blue. Uh, R is bottom left. Green is center top. Right, so no offset along X, but just go up. And then B is right bottom. So it's the opposite of the R offset, which goes bottom left. Uh, this one will go bottom right. That's why it's positive. Uh, it has a positive sign on the x-axis. So we'll get kind of a triangular split, split where R is bottom left, and green is top, and blue is bottom right. I hopefully I didn't mess up those words because I'm, it's what 7:46 a.m. right now. So just waiting for this. Oh, I woke up a couple hours ago. So. Okay, so R, G, uh, and then they're just, they'd just be scaled by this, and then applied to their respective, or yeah, applied as offsets to their respective sample plane. Right. So, uh, let's pick it here, 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 and here. You go there, you go there, and you go, whoops, what's happening? Okay. You go here. Great. That's a little weird, but it works. Um, and then I should be able to do just append them. So vector three, R for this, green for this, and this is the blue offset. So now we have the RGB channels combined. What does that look like? Hmm. I think it's working, but it's just a little bit difficult to tell because. Not only that, but the colors, I mean, by default, should just show black behind it. Why is it showing blue? I think something strange happened. We missed something, didn't we? Ta-da. That's it. Well, we got our chromatic aberration. Fantastic. But what about the distortion part? That's where the meat of it, isn't it? So, for that, we're going to have to create some noise we'll do in just a moment. I'm going to organize this a little better. Set this to... Well, register it as... Uh, RGB split. Scene color, I guess. Call it. And get scene color driven. Ta-da! So that's the same as it was before, just a little bit, bit, a little bit more organized. And let's see, for this next part, we just need some noise. So we can use noise generator. I'm going to set it to 3D. And we're going to sample the world position, but the vertex position. So the surface position uh, of this object. I'm going to use that as the UVs. Scaling. Okay, well, for scaling, we should multiply it manually here because we're going to be animating it. We don't want the animation to apply and then be scaled. We want to scale the input position and then apply the offset to whatever the scaled value is and then use that for the UVs of the noise generator. So, what did I just set as a property? Scale. Right, so. Let me set this to noise scale. Yep. Okay. Noise scale is by default one, and then we need to subtract mm, three, four, animation. So noise animation six one z. This is multiplied by time. Right. 
Okay, noise animation, noise and offset, JDBs, which can then, uh, well, just register some noise, and we'll set it here, output it, just to test. Alright, so let's set the scale of the noise to something higher, and let's set it to scroll upwards. Oh, was for sure. Yep, that's looking good. So now, from this noise, we need some sort of... Well, we can calculate the gradient for it. Uh, I'm just going to use height to normal. Or normal from height. So convert this to tangent normal, which is what we need. So we can call this the... So this can be now used for distortion. So I'm not sure if this was like length of gradient is maybe normal should have been called it, but either way. Let's now apply this as an offset to the UVs here. So before they're sent here and they have an offset applied to them, they can be distorted, I suppose. So, you just go here, and apply this first to scale it, though. We call it noise. And I guess. Not really sure. Okay, well, that's something doing yeah, so, so let's apply the offset here. Maybe even just like move it and make it its own variable that we can uh, call later. So we'll call it distorted screen position. The distorted screen position here, here. One, two, and three. And here, the subtract would be for the noise. So, noise, no. How's that? Okay. Then we just need to actually turn this. Cool. So if we, well, the RGB is a good sign. Uh, normal scale, what happens if we set it to zero? Yeah, that's useful, but not only that, I'm just going to multiply this. So that it's scaled. Um, just like any other value. Or zero. So noise. And I guess oh, this is gonna be zero. Mm. Let's see this. Both are gonna be by default. Well, one of them is gonna be one. This one not so much. Property. Okay. Scale and blend. That's the right order. Scale is one, and blend can flip. I mean, really, do we need both? Could have just combined them into one, but okay, anyways. Cool. Yeah, actually, that's that's really it. We're done. Uh, yeah. Change the scale. All right, there we go. So now anything that is rendered 
inside of it. Be seen like so. Scale distortion. Please. And now apply the command transformation. Now isn't that cool? You can make this more fancier by using refract. It wouldn't be particularly difficult. Um, then it'd be more akin to a glass shader. But that's really all it takes. That wasn't very difficult. So anything that ends up inside of it gets all chromatic aberration and distorted. Of course, you can increase the distortion or decrease it as you wish. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and thank you for watching.